Hey, I made a new cleaner. <laughs> For the drill, let's see how she works. That don't clean your bottles. I don't know what will. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. So we run them through there first. And then we give them the rinse on the old uh, jet washer. I think everybody's seen these type of bottle rinsers before. push down on the knob there and the, your hot water comes out. So I like to clean them all like this and get them all all ready before I bottle my meat. A lot of work but it's, it's worth it. We have all our bottles washed, cleaned, all inspected by eye, bleached, drilled, brushed really good. We know they're clean. They're going to go into the sanitizer shortly, and we're going to bottle the mead. So here's the five gallons of Dragon's Blood Mead. We didn't get around to bottling there three months ago. We got the potassium sorbate in there, and we got the back sweetener in there, the moaning orange in there. This is the Dragon's Blood Mead. And uh, it's almost one year old sitting here in the carboy, uh, March 2020. So we're going to get on with that, get this in the bottle, because we were too lazy to bottle it uh, three and a half months ago when we bottled the other one. <laughs> the other one came in at 17 and a half percent. This one's 13 and a quarter. Got our siphon tube here, all cleaned out, washed out. Don't forget to put your cap on there. On the bottom, that stops you from picking up any uh, any tube or lease and whatever's in the bottom. You're, you're what you might call it there before you start your bottling process. And we stick it down in our sanitizer here. I'm still not ready. I got to get a towel on the floor here. But we'll run some sanitizer through here in the meantime. Let it set through the hose and the, and the siphon tube here. Let that soak in there. I got the bottling wand in there and some bottles. So we'll get on with this shortly. Okay, we're on our way with the 13 and a quarter percent mead. I'll start filling some bottles here. <clears throat> and then we'll get them corked. Sometimes the wand will keep filling itself. I don't like when the wand hits the, the cupboard. It's like a contamination issue to me. So we'll let that go. We'll cork this one right now because I got a cork in there, so. We did the gas this last time. I gotta get a chair. <laughs> so the idea is to get it all bottled here. So I'm not gonna bore everybody with the recording. That's your average bottling wand right there. It has a spring-loaded tip. So when you pull it out, she stops flowing. For those who don't know. It's always easier when I got help here, but I got no help <coughs> on my own. Oh. Yeah, it's easier on a chair. So we are going to put some in a, a gallon jug here too.
<clears throat> and this is a, you can spin your bottle like that, it makes it come out a lot faster for those who don't know. This is a non-rinse sanitizer, so you don't have to worry about those bubbles in there. They're not harmful at all. Down to the last two bottles, and I'm going to uh, fill a gallon jug here. You can actually watch the snake of loveliness come out of this bottle. Like I say, it's a, a sanitizer, self-rinsing, doesn't hurt you at all. Star Sand is the name of this one. There, now we're, we hope we got enough to fill that jug. Let's cork the last two here. Use this type of corker, just use a little steady pressure. Keep your corks wet and sanitized. They'll go in a lot easier. Now when you take your cork or put it on top of the bottle, just do a little steady pressure on both sides. And she'll pop right in there for you. Don't force it. And there you go. So now we're going to fill our gallon jug and see if we got how much room we got left here. We ended up with 21 bottles and then three quarters of a gallon right here. So that would be uh, another four, 21, 25, about 25 bottles of delicious mead. And we got the carboy clean. We have a wine kit we're going to be making shortly. We haven't uh, done a wine kit. We did all our, our uh, wines by uh, homemade grapes, homegrown grapes. But this time we're going to try a wine kit. Let's see how that works out for us. Why wouldn't I? Once again we make our labels on the inkjet printer. And then we take them outside and we spray them with a uh, clear, clear coat. And then we uh, put them on the bottle with milk. We adhere them with milk. I cut these out with a razor blade. It's uh, it takes a little time, but you give some of your your uh, your meads and your wines away to relatives. You want it to you want it to look nice, so you make a label for them. I think I'm about ready to cut my finger on this razor blade, though. Cut them across. Stack them up here again. It's time consuming, but... Uh, Dragon Blood Mead, nice and clear. You should be able to see right through there and look outside. See those computer screens over there? She's clear as a whistle. Clear as a whistle. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting the labels on them today. So let's get to it. What we do is we get a little milk. We get our rag set up here. I'll show you how we, how I do it anyway. I get my label and set it in the milk there. It doesn't matter whether it gets on both sides or not. I take my bottle. Once again, I'm screwing up. I make sure I, I, it's away from the seam. I don't like to put the label over the seam. Wow. Well, anyway, we'll get this one on here. I put it on upside down if I'm not mistaken. Why wouldn't I? <clears throat> I 
I've been doing it this way for a long time here, over four or five years. I just, I use milk to put them on. It works just fine. Usually works fine. <laughs> Let's just hold this one in place a little longer, maybe. And then she's on, just like that. Then I take a little bleach rag, like I say before, I, and I wipe the bottle back down, get that milk off of there so you don't want to have a dirty bottle. And I'll put it out of its way. Whoa. So let's see if this shows up on camera a little bit better. Take the bottle, find the seam, turn the seam away from your label. It's the best thing to do. Take your label. Stick it in your milk. I use a, a milk and cream solution here. And since I spray the labels with uh, Claire, it doesn't matter if they get wet on the other side. The ink won't run. And that's the trick is to use a clear paint. And just put it in place like that. Take your t I'm out of place here. Take your towel. Wrap it over it. Push it down. Hold it in place for, I don't know, 10 seconds or so. Of course, I'm going to check the other one to see if it uh, if it's popping off or not here. Oh, she's on nice and tight. Just want to work that milk out of, the, out of the label with a dry rag. Push it down and, you know, push it on it. And it's as simple as that. Take my bleach rag, and I wipe the bottle down, get the milk off of there with the bleach rag, and she's on. And there's two. Once again, we just dip her in the milk, shake it off. It takes maybe three, four minutes a bottle to Get them clean, get the labels on, set them down, put your label in the milk. That's two bottles here. All right, all we got to do is take these uh, bottles here with the necks, put the neck on the thing and dip them in the hot water and shrink them onto the bottles and... Uh, and we're done. And that's what she looks like, fellas. You look right through that sucker, clear as a whistle. So yeah, we'll get to it. We'll get those caps on there and call it a day. Uh, we just poured a sample of the Orange Blossom Mead. It's uh, 13 and a quarter percent. Uh, back sweetened with Monin orange syrups. I'm going to get a taste on here. She's got some nice alcohol legs. I don't think the camera's going to pick up on that. But she come out clear as a whistle. I don't know if you're going to be able to see me through there, but I got it. Uh, let's get a sample of this, a taste test on it. Ah, oh, you can almost smell the alcohol in it. You get the little taste of the honey and a little taste of the orange. Oh, that's a good taste in meat. My wife's going to love this one. So early in the morning, you can't uh, sample more than this, or you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get your happy feet going. <laughs> oh yeah, mm. that's a good one. We got uh, 21 bottles and then a half a gallon. So about 24 bottles, 25 bottles totally out of the five gallons. So yeah, she's a good one. So Proust, until next time. We're going to be making a chocolate mead is our next uh, project on the mead level. So we're going to get that going shortly. We're going to be making that with some, uh, some chocolate malts from the beer making process.